Welcome to the action pack, Tom Rawls. Come smoke. Around that city and in the territory out west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. And that's with a state marshal and the smell of gun smoke. One day we'll have a good enough one out this way. Or in Dodge City, you'll be able to fix you up as good as you again. Now, you listen here. Even though they're no good to me, I've still got my two legs. I'm not going to let some sawbones go a hacking away at them, so maybe I'll end up losing them all together. Dad, that wouldn't happen. No, well, I'm not going to take that risk. And I sure do hate this chair. I could skin that Tony Wayne alive for putting me in at the drunken coyote. Dad, he didn't mean it. Oh, now, can't you let bygones be bygones? I'd like to run a team of horses over his legs. See how he feels deprived of everything he's lived for. Tied to a chair for the rest of his life. Dad, he didn't mean it. That team was frightened. Yeah, by his shots, drunken murdering coyote. I suppose I'm lucky I wasn't one of the ones who was killed. He'd never have been released from prison. Should have been kept there for life. There's one person in all this world I'd like to stand up against a fence and shoot down as Tony Wayne. Dad, you're getting sorry for yourself. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Gal. I, I promised you I wouldn't, didn't mm-hmm. I? You did. How about keeping huh? Tony wouldn't have deliberately hurt you. He was just a little lick it up and in the silly mood for shooting off his gun. He's even have entered his mind that the hero portion would take fight and both. Well, maybe he didn't mean it, but you think he'd have learned his lesson while he was in prison. He has that. Well, he still gets drunk, don't he? I don't know. I don't spend my time in this room. Well, he does. Jess has told me. He's seen him drunk a lot and in a mean, sour mood. 
regular fellow's mad. Dad, you're starting again. Uh, yes, I am. Well, getting back to your wanting to see the fields and the river at night. Tomorrow night, if it's fine and the moon's full like tonight, I'll get Jess to pick up a buckboard especially for you and I'll take you for a ride. Will you, girl? <laughs> sure, I will. Don't you get more of it, hmm? Just you look forward to tomorrow night. Hey, you're grand, Laurel. Grander gal no man could wish for. Oh, you only say that because you haven't seen many girls. Oh, oh, I've seen my share. I'll have you know I was quite a lad when I was young. <laughs> I bet you were. Yeah. Well, now you're settled out here. Would you mind very much if I went for a short ride? A ride? Hey, you've forgotten already Burn Kitten's come to see you. Oh, I'll be back to see Burn. But you've got to change and pretty yourself I'll up. I'll be back in time to do that. All right, girl, if you want to go for a ride, you go for a ride. I won't stop you. But why in the name of the devil you want to go when you got a special visitor coming to be Aunt May? I guess I'm just a chip off the old block. I, too, like to be along the moon, this river, in the field. Oh, well, that being the case, on your way. The sooner you go, the sooner you'll be back. Thanks, Dad. You're the best dad in the world. I still can't see him allowing you to marry me. He'll allow us, son. It may just take a little time. I don't figure he'd allow you if I was the last man on earth. So what chance have I got when he's already picked you out for Burn Kinton? Oh, Dad's only trying to foster that because Burn's the son of Dad's old friend. But don't ask me to marry Burn when he finds out I don't love him. You let me marry the man I want. Mm, not when the man's me, he won't. I tell you, he will. Just to do anything for me. I can twist him right around my little finger. Oh, that's the worry about it. Mm-hmm. Wasting time talking, and I'll have to be getting back to me. Mm. Honey, I love you more than anything in the whole world. How can a wonderful girl like you be interested in a hobo like me? I guess I got no sense of that in <laughs> Hey, you washed your hair today. Uh huh. Mmm, smells better than the sweetest flower. Even better than the best brand of whiskey. Oh, no. <laughs> I was only joking, honey. And you know what? With the moon shining down on it like it is, it's just like pure molten silver. And the daylight is 
just like pure gold. And when it hasn't been washed, it's just like old rope. Go on, say it. <laughs> well, this is a pretty sight of mercy. Sir, what are you doing out here? What am I doing out of here when I should be at your place waiting for you? Well, I got tired of waiting for you every night when you gone to your mysterious night ride, so tonight I decided to follow you. I had no idea you'd lead me to a romantic little place like this. You gotta hide, Kenton. You should talk. I got a gun, Wayne. I gotta shoot you down for luring my girl out here like this. Let her go. Tony didn't have to lure me out here, Burn. I came on my own accord. Well, it makes it worse. Yeah, I should have known you were too beautiful. Too saintly. You're just one of the types. The same type as any man can find in any saloon or dancing hall. My eyes should <laughs> Yeah, that's just how I'd expect any dancing girl to act. <laughs> Tell him, Wayne, you love only him and then riding back to be with me. Get on your horse and ride before I shoot you down here. Yeah, straight back to your house, Laura. You may as well get this into your head, Wayne. Her father will never let her marry you ever in a million years. Keep moving. Anyway, her old man will be doing you a good turn. You'll never be able to trust her. Like I said, she's just a... Tony, put away that gun. I'll have to get home and explain everything to Dad before he feels about a burn story. Was he telling the truth, but he said you'd be leaving me out here, riding home to love him? Of course not. I couldn't stand it to think you'd ever two time me, Laurel. I couldn't. If I can't have you all to myself, nobody's going to have you. time I was on the trail riding towards the place. In the distance, I'd heard two shots. But... And I figured it was probably only somebody out hunting Jack Rabbit. Then I heard... I lined up the direction of the sound spurred my horse. About two minutes later, I came across it. Man, what happened? You hear me, man? I'm not telling him a friend, man. Tell me what happened. This fellow told me that he shoot you. Yes. So bad. Yes. Where will I find So bad. Go easy on your language. I didn't kill it. 
What were you doing hiding in the shadows there? I met Morgan. Yeah, and I'm Wyatt Earp. Don't say. I'm not fooling, though. There's no badge. There's no papers to prove it. You can read them in the dark. Now, what's your real name? Tony Wayne. I'm sorry for being ornery with you, Marshal. Say, Tony? That's right. Anything wrong with that? What? How well do you know this girl? Well enough to love her and for her to love me. When did you last see her? Why, only a couple of minutes ago. I just left her and I was about a mile along the track when I heard the scream and the shot. Say, why aren't you going after the murderer instead of standing here talking? You must have happened a long fast. I did. Then you couldn't have missed the killer by more than a few seconds. He can't be far away. Maybe I didn't miss him at all. Why'd you kill him? Me kill him? You're joking. Far from it. For a marshal, you haven't got much brains. Do you think that if I'd killed her, I would have come back here? Maybe if you'd left something behind, or if you'd heard me coming on the scene and wanted to give yourself a good alibi. You're all wrong, Marshal. I love the girl. I'm going to find the murdering coyote who shot her. There's no use you should try that stuff with me, Wayne. What? All this pretending. When I got here, the girl was still alive. She was? Yeah, she told me who shot her. Who'd she say it was? But she couldn't have. She did. And she didn't know what she was saying. I'll admit she was delirious, but a person in her condition wouldn't tell a lie. And you must have heard her wrong, Marshal. I didn't kill her. I swear I didn't. I wouldn't hurt her for anything in the world. You may as well tell the truth, Way. You have trouble beating evidence like this. What did she say? When I jumped off my horse and walked up to her, she kept saying in a terrified voice, Tony, don't shoot again. You're a liar. I told her I was a friend and asked her if the fella she thought she was talking to, Tony, had killed her, and she said yes. She asked me to tell her dad and Jess. You know her dad? Yeah. I know him. Who's Jess? Her brother. Now listen to me, Marshal. This has gone wrong somewhere. I right, it's gone wrong for you. Now get up in your horse. What are you going to do with me? I'm going to take you into town. The sheriff have you locked up to await trial. Maybe on the way, call him into his father to break the news to him. I tell you, I'm innocent. We'll let the judge figure that out. So, reluctantly, you know, the time swearing he's innocent, Tommy Wayne leads me out of the valley and to the house owned by Laura Jester's father. Keep him a gun trained in Wayne. I tell him to dismount and knock on the door. Well, he's guilty, ain't he? 
guess so. We'll have to let a court decide the thing. You've been quiet ever since we rode up to Jess's branch, Wayne. Nothing wrong with that, is there, Marshal? If you didn't kill the gal, who did? Well, since you're interested enough to ask, I reckon it was Burn Kinton. But I ain't going to get any chance to prove it. I can't see any sense in anybody trying to prove anything except your guilt. That's what I heard from the dying gal. If you can give me enough reasons, maybe I'll investigate it further before your trial comes up. Now tell me, why do you reckon it was Burn Kinton? Well, the main reason is... He was the only other person who knew Laurel was out there where she was shot. It was our secret meeting place, so he trailed her out there tonight. Uh huh. And when he left us, he was hopping mad that Laurel had thrown him over. He was full of threats and all, trying to make her turn back to him. But I reckon that before he rode very far, he realized he'd never do that. So he rode back to maybe shoot us. I wasn't there because. Laurel had told me she wanted to be alone so she could work out what she was going to say to her father. So he shot her. Maybe after they'd argue to mine. Yeah, it could be. He was awful quiet back there at the ranch. I reckon he was scared you might ask him questions. If it weren't for one thing, I suppose Kenton would be as big a suspect as you. What's that? It weren't for the fact that the dying gal told me he shot her. I can't understand that. I can't understand it at all. It looks like cooking your goose. But unless I can find some definite proof against him. You mean you're going to try? Yep. As soon as the sun comes up in the morning. Then you're starting to think maybe I'm not you. I wouldn't say that. Say, I figure I could maybe make a few investigations. I hate to bother you with questions at a time like this. But I'd like to know what time Burn Kenton arrived here at your house last night. Yeah, with all that's going on, how do you expect me to know that? Well, it's important that I know. You try and remember. I can't remember nothing, Marshal. I can't even remember what day it is. Would it have been five minutes before I turned up at Wayne? Oh, no, he rode up a long time before you two. Would it have been a quarter hour, a half hour? About half an hour, I'd say, but... Why do you want to know about Byrne, Marshal? I got no reason. You'd say he rode up about half an hour before us. Yes. Yeah. You know, if he'd been riding hard, if his horse was sweating. Well, I didn't even see his horse, Marshal. He come on inside to me. Yes. Well, I don't know. I'll ask him. Yes. What do you want, Dad? You come here. Marshal wants to ask you something. Trouble, Marshal. You see Kenton right up here last night. Now, let me think. No, I didn't. I was, well, down in the barns doing a spot of cleaning up. You wouldn't know he'd ridden hard if his horse was sweating. Well, like I say, I didn't see his horse. But the man himself was all right. I wouldn't say he'd ridden hard. Well, he couldn't have been anywhere near low once he was shot. You're right there too long before us and without riding hard. Well, what are you trying to prove, Marshal? That burn. Kenton murdered Laurel? I was. Oh, I'm sure glad. I was thinking maybe you'd gone off your head. You've already got Laurel's killer in the Crimson Jail. Before going back to the prison and telling Tony Wayne had given up investigation, I decided to ride down the valley and have a look at the scene of the cry in the daylight. Sure glad I did. Otherwise, an innocent man would have been hanged. Back, Mr. Jessup. Sorry to keep bothering you, but where could I find Jess? Well, he's down there in the stable, Marshal, saving his horse. He's going into town. Fine, mighty fine. I hope. So. What do you mean by that? I'll tell you in a minute. Can I come in, Jess? Oh, oh Marshal. You scared me. Sure, come in. Yes, yeah, my second horse. Yeah. He's level to go on them, too. Mighty fancy. I bought it from the fellow who had it made in Kansas City. Yeah, it's not even buckled. Yeah. 
One of them's come off, you see? That one there. I have to have an odd one put on. Don't know where I could have lost it. This be it. Well, yeah, it sure is. Where'd you find it? Down by the river where your sister was murdered. What? I also found imprints of what I'd say were your shoes at the horse you. Anyway, we can check on that. Marshal, you're out of your mind. When he finally realized he'd come to the end of the trail, he admitted it. He hated his sister. Hated the way his father loved her. Admitted that he killed her because he believed that one day his father would leave the ranch entirely to her. Now, like I told him, his big boots gave him away. Big working boots. Both Tony Wayne and Bern Kinton were wearing high heel riding boots on the night of the murder. Oh, yeah, about love when she was dying, saying Tony killed her. Well, you see, uh, turned out that Tony was Jess's Christian name. Jess was only short and full of a surname, Jessup. But it had kind of been accepted, and Tony's almost forgotten. Guess my fear law called him Tony, not the more friendly name. And I misunderstood her dying words. You see, instead of meaning tell Dad and Jess, she'd been trying to, try to say something like, uh, Tell Dad Jess did it. Well, the story goes to show just how careful and sure of ourselves we should be before we condemn anybody, for instance. Join us again next week when Matt Morgan fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke is written by Russ Ryder and produced by Jim Bradley for our transcripts.